Hi, I'm Scott from Beat Neighbor Fertilizer, and today we're talking about pest management. And pest management is a topic that we take very seriously in the greenhouses as professional growers because uh, it's, it's very easy for insects to thrive in a greenhouse setting, and uh, they're, they're not the necessarily the beneficial insects. You know, we, we want to protect our, our bees and our butterflies and our pollinators, but inside the greenhouse, we also have a lot of uh, pests that can do a lot of damage and they can do it very quickly. So as professional growers, it's it's something that we have to stay on top of. And the best thing that I can tell you um, at home is to practice preventative maintenance. It's what we do in the greenhouses and you want to make sure that you are on top of things before you have a problem. And if you don't hear anything else, I want you to take away from this video of preventative maintenance. Um, have a plan and follow it and um, prevent an outbreak of bugs before you even have it. So that's, that's really one of the, the, the easiest things. And one of the worst pests that we can see inside in a greenhouse setting is aphids. And aphids are just, um, they're a tiny little green to brown uh, bug. They have to walk, they can't, they can't fly, um, they don't have wings, so they do have to crawl. And that sounds like, well, they can't get very far, but they, they can, and they can do it very quickly and you can have an infestation of aphids so fast um, in a greenhouse um, because each aphid will give live birth to about 40 aphids every two days. So you can see, and, and, and those, um, those baby aphids will turn into adults in just a couple days and they give live birth to 40 uh, new baby aphids and I mean, you can have millions of aphids so fast. And so aphids are something that we want to to really stay on top of and they're they're out there naturally so it's it's not something that you can prevent you know if you have a garden they're they're out there they're they're out in in the wild and yeah, one of the things that if you have like green peppers if you if you're growing peppers uh, peppers of any sort peppers really yeah, they really attract aphids so it, it's something that you want to stay on top of and one of the best ways that you can do that uh, is using a systemic insecticide. And um, so a systemic, you would sprinkle in around your plant. And when you water, it will go down in and get drawn into the roots and will go up into the plant itself. And it will provide that barrier of protection because aphids, they, they have a mouth that has like a little piercing. And what they do is they will poke into your plant and, and drink the juice. And aphids are they're they're very tough to kill, and they're tough to even see because they're very small, and they're always almost always underneath the leaf. So if you look at the plant, this is a pepper plant. If you look at the top, you might not think that you have a problem, but you have to turn it upside down and look very closely. And I I highly suggest if you're growing peppers, to take a look at your plants, and it, it's not it's just it's not limited to just peppers. They there's a lot of they they really favor the the tender green leaves and there's 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 lots of flowers that are in that category that they like they they like the uh, uh, the potato vine they like pansies they like fuchsias and uh, there's there's a there's a whole list of them that um, that they'll go after first, but we find in, in the garden um, pepper plants are one of the very first ones that they go after so. So this is a systemic insecticide, and I just have it in a bottle. It's it's kind of easy for me, so that that can just go through and I sprinkle it on top of there. It it, it kind of looks like a, almost looks like a you know salt and pepper mixture, but it's uh, it, we just sprinkle around the 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 base of the soil, and uh, when we water it, it will go down into the into the soil and get drawn up into the plant. Now, if you have house plants, I highly suggest uh, using a systemic and a especially if you are bringing your, your house plants outside in the summer, they're being exposed to all kinds of insects. And uh, say if you start going into fall and you, you, you need to bring in those, those plants back indoors, you're gonna bring in uh, a lot of insects with those plants. So again, being on top of uh, you know, this pest management before anything happens, treat them with a systemic. It's just one of the best absolute preventatives. Now another common one that uh, bug that we see are thrips, and we love Gabbara daisies. They're 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 beautiful flowers. Um, love them for cut flowers, 
I love them for house plants. They're one of the few plants that, you know, it's an outdoor plant, but you can bring it inside. You know, they clean the air in your house. So uh, Gerbera daisies are, they're a lot of fun to have and a lot of fun to grow. But Gerbera daisies are real susceptible uh, for thrips. And thrips are kind of a, they're, they're, again, they're a very small bug. They're really hard to see. They kind of have kind of a long body. And where they like to hide is right here in, right in the flower. And again, they have a mouth that pokes in and they, they'll drink the juice. And it, it might look like your flowers are just naturally dying. However, you might have a thrip problem. And one of the easiest ways to, to check, you take a white piece of paper and you just have to tap, 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 tap on the flower and take a look at your sheet of paper. And you might have to look really closely and see if you have any thrips here. And um, it, it might just look like a little oh, no, bigger than dust, but all of a sudden they'll start crawling. So then you'll know whether or not you have thrips or not. And again, a systemic insecticide around the base will, will do wonders. It'll, it'll help a lot. So to go ahead and protect your plants. And I, I really, I highly suggest, you know, for your indoor plants to go through and hit them with a systemic insecticide. Um, fungus gnats. Now fungus gnats, you know, in the greenhouses, um, they're, they're really just kind of a, a nuisance. Um, and think of them almost like fruit flies. You know, in the kitchen you have fruit or, you know, you've got bananas or something and um, you'll see the little fruit flies. Fungus gnats are kind of a lot like, uh, like uh, fruit flies. And for us, one of the easiest ways to catch them is with a sticky trap. And, it, and it's also a way for us to monitor. And you can buy these too. Um, it, it, so it, it'll help to, to tell you if you have a problem. So fungus gnats, they, they're not really uh, too destructive, but they are annoying. And so again, a systemic will help kill the larvae. But if you do have flying fungus gnats, you know, that adult generation that can fly, it, they're about the, the only way you can kill them is with like a sticky trap and so if you have if you're growing plants indoors you know say you've got your garden plants and they when you overwater uh when you have a habit of overwatering they like this moist soil and that's where you'll start seeing them especially if you get a little crust of they they kind of like to feed on the organic material on top of the soil uh, so again they really they really don't destroy um unless you have a really bad infestation but one of the easiest ways to catch them is with sticky traps. So that's, that's all that these are. And they, they have this cover and you just, you just pull this off. Uh, we like to just stick them onto a paint paddle and um, it, just, it just helps to catch the ones that are flying around. So that's, that's fungus gnats. Um, again, not, not, not too destructive. Uh, white fly, again, you can, uh, you can use sticky traps the systemic insecticide too, the, the white fly will, uh, they will feed. And um, if you had a poinsettia uh, at, at Christmas time, and you know, unfortunately, if you buy like the cheap poinsettias at the big box retailers, a lot of times you drag those home, you're dragging, you're dragging home white fly in, you know, into your house. And that's gonna get, that's gonna infest the rest of your plants. So, you know, uh, use discretion. Um, uh, another thing that we see are rose chafers. Now, for petunias, petunias are petunias are extremely hardy, and petunias almost you know they're when you touch their leaves they're kind of sticky, so it's almost like they are their own built-in sticky trap. So there's not there are not many bugs that will attack a, a petunia. However, one of the things that we typically see in right around you no know, late June, if you see holes in the petunia petal in the petal itself in the flower uh, you can you can probably bet that you have uh, rose chafers and rose chafers are again they're kind of a, a bigger beetle uh, a lot of people will call them japanese beetles um, that's that's a different type of bug they're very similar and they do they do some of the similar things um, but the, the rose chafer, obviously, and they can be on your roses too, they can destroy, and they can clean up very quickly. So what we do for our petunias is we, we, again, we use a systemic insecticide. So when they're munching, they're getting poisoned. 
and, and they will die off. But usually it's, it's not a long period that rose chafers are out. So you know, if, you can, if you can bear through that week to two weeks, um, it, through that cycle, it's, it's pretty quick, but you hate to have a beautiful uh, hanging basket or, or a great big planter of, you know, especially like petunias, and then, boy, in, in, in a day or two, all of a sudden, they're, they're destroyed. So, again, using a systemic insecticide, you know, I'm going to go back to this. Systemic insecticide is going to cure a lot of your problems. Now, in the garden, uh, another, another thing that we hear about a lot are cutworms. And cutworms will, uh, they're, they're, a cat, they're a little caterpillar, and they live in the soil, and they're, they actually turn into a moth. Uh, but when the, when the cutworms come out, and um, usually in, in, our, in our garden center, we will hear about it all in one day. You know, all of a sudden, everybody coming in, um, the cutworms are out. The cutworms destroyed my whatever, tomatoes, peppers, uh, my corn, my, my whatever. And uh, they will... They, you know, just like the name says, cut. They chew at the, the stem here, and that plant will fall right over and die. So they are very destructive, and again, they come out at night, so you don't even know that you have a problem until you wake up in the next morning and all your vegetable plants are laying over. So cutworms, uh, something that a lot of people use is the diatomaceous earth, and I don't have any here to show, but diatomaceous, Diatomaceous earth is just a ground up, uh, just kind of a rock or mineral, um, and you can you can draw a line around your plants with it, and that just helps prevent uh, when they crawl through it, they get cut up and and they will die. So, and, and a lot of people will make little cups, and there's some physical barriers that they will use for cutworms to uh, to help protect their plants. But if you have, if you have a lot of plants in your garden, well then you might you might want to consider the diatomaceous earth, and it's also something that works for slugs. Uh, same thing uh, if you have a slug problem, and there are there are some um, powders and chemicals specifically for uh, slugs, but diatomaceous earth. A lot of people have uh, good success with that. So, you know, also with your garden, you can use a garden dust, and I do suggest that. And um, uh, there's and there's nothing wrong if you want to be totally organic. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but I I just like to hit things, you know, in our garden, I like to kind of hit them hard early on before there's any fruit, um, you know, before we're, we're harvesting fruit. And again, it's just that preventative maintenance that, uh, especially if you have uh, cabbage or, um, you know, some of those that, you know, the, the, the bugs are going to munch on. Uh, I like to hit those early on and kind of make sure that the, the problem is at bay you know, before we're ready to harvest. So also malathion is another is a good spray that you can use. It, it kind of stinks. So it's it's something that I use just periodically, but it, it definitely will will kill down the bugs, anything that's that's attacking them. Uh, you know, another thing that we have a commercial apple orchard and you know, people ask us, you know, when when do you spray for your fruit trees? And that's something that we uh, we do early on in the spring and it will vary if you're from a different part of the country. We're we're in northern Wisconsin, so uh, we're, we're usually a little bit more behind as far as weather. It's a lot colder until later, later on in the spring and, and summer. But you can use a dormant oil uh, or early in the spring. Usually once you're over that 40 degree mark, um, we'll go through and spray dormant oil. And it's just a, it's almost like a, well, it's a neem oil. So it's kind of like a, almost like a vegetable oil that gets sprayed on the trees. And there's, there's usually little egg masses um, you know, on the trees and, and you don't even know that they're there. But the, but the dormant oil will spray over that and it actually suffocates the eggs. So this is, you know, this is not a comprehensive list by any means. We just want to give you a few, uh, few pointers and tips and tricks, you know, that we use in the greenhouses professionally. Um, again, preventative maintenance is going to uh, really be the key and be be your best friend. You know, you want to get on top of things before you have a problem because it's it's really hard. And I, I can speak from experience. You know, when, when you magnify that into a greenhouse setting, you got you know maybe three hundred thousand plants that all of a sudden you have to treat because you've got you've got a problem. We, we've we've learned that lesson, so I, I hope I can um, you know give that that advice to you of uh, preventive maintenance really solves a lot of headaches so hope that helps you can go to our website at beatyourneighbor.com for more how-to videos and tips and tricks and be sure to uh, check out our blog and the videos there and also to sign up for our email newsletter we, we send a lot of these out in our email newsletter and you can you can just add in your email address there for the the newsletter that comes out we'll talk to you later see you soon